Narragansett Bay is home to the, one of the world's longest running plankton time series records. For it was started over 50 years ago. And this has been really valuable to our research because for over 50 years, there's been a species in Narragansett Bay that's a diatom. This genus, which is a group of these cells, has been present in Narragansett Bay, but it wasn't until very recently in 2015 and 2016 that some emerging harmful algal bloom events were detected from the toxin that the species is known to produce. And so the vision for the observatory was to put um, suites of ocean sensors and autonomous sampling capability that could be triggered in response to changing events. Data has so many different connotations to it. It's like vital information that tells us about what's happening in our ecosystem. And how we collect that data and how we translate it and how we use it is part of the lifeblood of the ecosystem organism. We have many, many communities that, that fringe the shorelines of Narragansett Bay. It's a very visceral place for, for many people. We know more about Narragansett Bay than we know a lot of about a lot of other estuaries in the world, but we still don't know enough. We have all this data and we still don't know how it works, which is crazy to think about because for something that's so well monitored, you would think we'd have an answer, but we don't. So the Bay Observatory itself is comprised of multiple different stations, of different data streams, of different people working on different aspects. Bay means different things to different people. In a small state like ours, that is the ocean state. That's our name. And understanding uh, what the stressors are on that, on that resource is really important. All the tools that we've been developing in this project go toward different aspects of monitoring and understanding and hopefully predicting what changes we can expect in the future. And so you've got a wonderful opportunity to use the bay for prediction and for making sure that we steward the health of the bay in as best as way possible. When you start thinking about data, data is valuable when it's available to be used. The Bay Observatory is designed to try to bridge all of these disciplines and bring these data streams into one coherent route. We did find that we have this species, Pseudonychia australis, that's problematic in Narragansett Bay, and so we know that that's something we want to monitor in the future. But there's still a lot of work that can be done on really understanding what specifically causes these harmful algal blooms in terms of environmental changes. Shell fisheries are a multi-million dollar industry in Rhode Island, and so harmful algal bloom events have a local financial impact as well as a public health impact. So we've only had one true fisheries closure in Narragansett Bay. There was a precautionary closure in 2016 and a full closure for a period in 2017. So this is, this is a scientific story and investigation unfolding over real time. And we're trying to tease out maybe some of the ecological drivers. But also to begin bringing in all the other data that's been out there for decades now into one coherent, workspace, the, the, the website that we have for the Data Discovery Center. Data should be open and available for anyone to look at. I think that allows us to open up these research questions to a much broader audience of scientists that can start to explore these topics. And CAIM is a great framework for bringing those different pieces of data together. So we go from the notebooks 
to real-time data streaming. In this internet age of on-demand material, data too can be like that. And that's something that we've missed in science. In some ways, as researchers, we can kind of get disconnected from our systems when we think about it in terms of just numbers. Maybe we are still stuck in our academic ways and we need to make the science even more accessible. It gives the audience like so much agency to be able to be like deeply invested in this research that's happening in their community. I think it re reframes your relationship to your home a lot too. And I think that when you're having conversations about a geographical area, you end up doing that and understand the importance of how, you know, these scientific breakthroughs impact us as like, as a human being, as a human race. So I feel like CAMES really empowered a lot of discovery-based science. That's like one of the biggest success stories I've seen is just the freedom that this project has given the early career investigators in particular a, a way to do work that they're interested in and, and work with teams of people and, and produce, produce really new scientific discoveries. We really want to make our future students better citizens, right? And better citizens come with more science literacy and being able to understand what's happening, what's changing, how they can actually be agents of change, basically.